change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and I'm having a lot of thoughts today about reading and education and mind expansion, perspective shifting. I read a lot these days. I'm averaging about a book every three days, and it's pretty rare that I'm not listening to something. There are moments when I'm either hanging out with family or uh, working on the computer where I don't listen, but just about all of my other time, I'm listening to a book. And I'm questioned about this a lot because this constant stream of incoming information often confuses me, often overwhelms me, and often gets me to question previously held beliefs. And from the outside, that looks problematic. Like, why are you filling your head with all of this information? Doesn't that just make it more difficult to take action? Doesn't that make it more difficult to know who you are and what you believe and, and to be able to take a step with some sort of certainty that you're doing the right thing? Especially when you're reading books that conflict with each other? This one says this, and that one says that, and they both have really compelling arguments, so which one is right? Yeah, initially it was a little confusing, and it was quite a bit overwhelming, but the end result is that I'm much, much more flexible in my thinking. I have a much greater ability to consider the point of view of other people because I'm constantly listening to the points of view of other people people that have really thought about what they're saying and what they're writing about. And I think that the ability to consider another's perspective is sadly lacking in not only just our society, but in most societies. That you get this crystallization of cultural thought around particular ideals. Um, we see this in the United States with different political groups or with religious groups. and it's very, very difficult for people to look outside of their own moral or cultural framework and see the possibilities out there in the world. And in my experience, reading and constantly putting myself into the shoes of another mind, if that makes sense, I have gained this flexibility. And rather than having these really certain beliefs that are solid, I've got these more malleable, near-liquid beliefs that change quite often. They're quite flexible. And I may have an emotional urge in me that gets me to want to be certain about something and want to feel solid about something. But then as I start moving towards it, I realize, hmm, maybe that's not actually the way it is. Let's take a moment to consider. Let's be more gentle with this experience and with our own thoughts. So, the point of me saying this is that reading is good, and reading a lot is good. And it's not about learning the information. It's not about memorizing the information. It's not so much about knowledge is power as it is about, wow, I don't know nearly as much as I thought I did. Or, wow, there's so many different perspectives out there, especially in this particular group that I thought was totally homogeneous. And this is really common in human beings, not just in me, but all of us. We've got in-group thinking and out-group thinking. In a particular group, we have this underlying cord that ties us all together, this underlying belief, but we also understand that there's a great deal of diversity and individuality within the group. I know my friends are not all like me. I know my family is not all like me, but yet we are Americans or we are Vermonters or whatever the larger category we fit into. For instance, Bernie Sanders has gotten Vermonters to really rally around each other and feel this special pride for being from Vermont and having elected him for so many years in a row. It's like, yeah, we created him. And you see this unification, but at the same time, you also see the great diversity because you're on the ground with the people, interacting with them, and you're like, yeah, they're like me, but they're also very different than me. And the way that they're like me is just this abstract cultural construct and not a real similarity. It's totally arbitrary. Vermont is an arbitrary distinction. 
the United States is an arbitrary distinction. But from inside of these arbitrary groups, we tend to see everybody outside of the group as being very, very similar. And we attribute certain qualities and features to the entire group. This is called the fundamental attribution error, where we say that all of these people are all like this. Because we don't see their individuality anymore. We have put them in a group and now we look at the group or the container, which by the way is also incredibly arbitrary, and we say, ah, the people in this group are like that because of this arbitrary container that they're in. But when we look at our group, we say, well, yeah, I'm a Vermonter, but I'm nothing like all the other Vermonters. We're all different, we're all unique. In fact, the town that I live in, I feel like an alien because of the choices and practices and beliefs that I hold, but yet we're all Vermonters. So we get to see our diversity at a ground level, but when we go way up there in the sky and we're flying over another group, we don't see the people, we don't see the individuality. And then we think, oh, they're all like that because they have this group label. So reading, reading, reading is the way to expand these arbitrary containers and allow yourself to get into the perspectives of other people. Again, it's not about remembering the information and then quoting it back verbatim. That's not the point. The point is to loosen up your thinking, to allow for flexibility in your thinking, and to start seeing people in those out groups as very, very diverse and potentially just like you. So pick up a great book and try on somebody else's perspective. Try being flexible in your thinking. Don't look for ways to disconfirm the information in the book. Just soak it up. As if you're having a conversation with someone and getting to know the way they think about things. Don't try to shut them down. Don't try to make them wrong. Don't look for holes in their arguments. Just listen or read. Soak it up and say, wow, that's a really interesting perspective. I hadn't considered that. And they've got some really compelling arguments. They've got some really compelling data. And it's not about right or wrong. It's simply about this expansion, this ability to widen the net or to widen the group that we call like me. I'm working on a group right now called human so that everyone I look at is like me because we have common humanity. And when you can start to see more and more people as like you, it's easier to be compassionate with them and their choices because none of us are perfect. We all have our challenges. And when we see that those people out there are human just like us, with lives just like ours, with challenges and obstacles and fears just like ours, we stop judging them as being beneath us or inferior to us or dangerous. So reading is a good thing. So there's my blurb for the day. And this is why I read so much. It's not necessarily to just fill my head with information that I can't possibly retain. It's to open me up to the world and open me up to possibility. It's like stretching for the mind. So pick up a great book and stretch your mind out. I love you guys. See ya. And that's what this project is about for me. Taking a very sensitive, prone to depression brain that just loves to check out and disappear for months at a time, taking that brain, taking my genetic tendencies and my early life experiences and creating patterns of behavior that allow me to engage really powerfully every single day, no matter what happens. Thank you.